day already of September. It's 2023. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to be your host, Dana Durnford, also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. And we used to get you to call in live, but the nuclear industry has hacked YouTube and Rubble, and we can't live stream no more. Not because I'm banned, I'm banned by the nuclear industry's lobbying hackers. Don't laugh because it's your freedom they took away too. We're going to cover the latest, greatest propaganda from the genocidal, omnicidal critter known as nuclear. <coughs> nuclear never takes a break. They have uh, millions of scumbags worldwide ready to cut your throat. International Atomic Energy Agency finds tritium <laughs> levels in the seawater near Fukushima. And so it starts off bad, and it's bad around here. This is what we're stuck with, unfortunately. Just to give you context how best you crazy this whole story actually is, is those whatever medias are pretending they're in the building to the left, 100 feet above it. It doesn't even exist. And it goes downhill from there with respect or credibility for the journalist and the medias themselves, obviously, the International Atomic Energy Agency says it's sampling an analyst of seawater shows that tritium, tritium, after nuclear meltdowns, all they're looking for is tritium. They started doing that on July the 13th of this year, 2023. For the last uh, 12 years, tritium was barely ever mentioned, and that the models of radioactive fallout have nothing to do with tritium. The fallout I'll show you some examples of it. It's so crazy that anybody is mentioning the words tritium. And it should be very concerning for you and everybody else that tritium somehow is in this conversation. The International Atomic Energy Agency is looking for... Now, they've only been there five times in the last 12 years. All of them were this year. To approve growing food in the 30 million one-ton bags of radioactive soil and to promote the false story that nothing got out of Fukushima and that it's only going to be tritium. So the building, nothing got out of a building that don't even exist anymore. The models of the plutonium-239 from TEPCO are no longer applicable because the International Atomic Energy Agency has moved goalposts to another solar system that was only acknowledged in tritium. The bags, one-ton bags of radiation are not full of tritium. They're full of cesium, uranium, plutonium, and everything else. The 14 prefectures that I have highlighted were banned. The food is banned, not because of tritium, because of radioactive fallout. That's how tall the reactor should be. And that's how tall they are. So if we took reactor three and four, which had two fuel pools stuffed with reactor cores at the top of the buildings, and you stack three and four on top of each other, they're not as tall as the bottom part of the Kevlar sarcophagus framing, which would be right there. These stumps should have been removed completely, see? They left it there to manipulate you. 
and your silence tells me that I worked very well. They're actually pretending they're in a building that don't exist. I don't know how to articulate something that evil. Tritium is not detectable in fish cut off the Fukushima prefecture. Tritium is not detectable in fish caught in a nuclear wasteland surrounded by nuclear wastelands. See, all those prefectures, every time it rains, just radiation is pouring into the ocean from the trees and the mud and the rivers and the estuaries and just rain doing what rain does. We're in real danger. You don't have a future. Shows tritium. It's supposed to be tritium 3H, by the way. And tritium is a very nasty isotope, so you'd think they would at least give it a capital letter to articulate. Tritium levels in the sea off Fukushima Daiichi plant stays low as planned. Stays low as planned. Well, the buildings don't even exist. You, you can't capture something, put it in tanks when the buildings don't exist. And that the radioactive emissions already cover the entire planet and that billions of people have ate food from the nuclear wasteland without knowing it. That the fallout, the buildings actually detonated. Infinitely, these are, each of these buildings, because they're pure uranium, pure plutonium, are probably a thousand times worse than Chernobyl, and Chernobyl was brutal. Another model shows the radioactive folly covering the entire, the entire planet in 27 days. So when they say tritium levels in the sea off Fukushima Daiichi plant stay low as planned, that's them hating your guts. That's what a journalist does now is they destroy everybody's future for their paychecks each Friday. Japan's insane, immoral, illegal radioactive dumping. So they're they're promoting the fable that nothing has gotten out of the buildings that don't even exist anymore. Tritium not detected in fish cut off. Tritium. Tri not uranium or plutonium or all the other isotopes. But tritium. Let me just give me a second and see if I can tighten that connection. And hopefully that's just my headphones and not the microphone that time. Exploring tritium danger. <coughs> a book review by scumbag Robert Alvarez. And Robert Alvarez is a senior scholar at the Institute for Policy. He served as a senior advisor for the Energy Department. And he's a 100% degenerate scumbag that I've covered many times over the many, many years we've been doing this. So he was um, downplaying a book uh, written by a scholar that uh, starts articulating it. So you can't really do it justice in a story, but it, there is some enlightening stuff here about tritium, which is the last isotope I'm worried about because the reactor is actually melted down. So I'm worried about the perpetual releases from the meltdowns. And there's four reactors melted down and eight fuel pools and we've never that's more than all nuclear reactors melting down worldwide in history at a single site and each of these buildings had two decades worth of reactor cores or four decades worth of reactor cores at the top of the buildings in what's known as they call them fuel pools um, these are not pools in any conventional sense they're special water and you have to add about 120,000 liters to each containment a day because it boils off. And each liter 
is saturated with hideous radioactive isotopes. It's one great big stupid 80 year house of cards and at some point that house of cards will fall. They're, they just tell bigger lies every other day. The lies get bigger and bigger. Currently they're successfully convinced the planet that tritium is the only thing they got out of the buildings, but they claimed it's in a thousand tanks, so don't worry about it. If that was your apartment building, because these were 190 feet tall, and your loved one sent you a picture and said, don't worry, everything's okay, what would you say, I wonder? Is there anybody left honest on the media worldwide? Because we can't find them. If you know one, let me know so I can send them this stuff. Tritium is one of the most expensive, rare, potentially harmful elements. Its rarity is underscored by its price, about $30,000 per gram, which is projected to rise to one hundred to 200000 per gram. For fusion reactors, that's why they're talking that way. They need tritium. You need tritium for bombs. They make the bombs... Uh, one to a thousand times more powerful by adding tritium, despite the fact that they're trying to convince the victims that it's harmless. It's a radioactive contaminant that has been released widely to the air and water. They can't contain it. It seeps out and hemorrhages out, and it's truly the, the atomic plague starts with tritium. from the spent nuclear fuel reprocessing plants, but all 410 current reactors, and everyone before it and everyone in the future, hemorrhages it into the environment. The Canadian Kandu reactors are the best examples. They're insidious. But one teaspoon of tritiated water will contaminate about 100 billion gallons of water to the U.S. drinking water limits, which is 7,500 becquels per liter, which is absurd numbers. California, though, is only 15 becquels a liter. That is enough to supply about 1 million homes with water for a year. One tablespoonful, I'm sorry, teaspoonful, will contaminate it. And this for 120 years, contaminated it. Creating a steady state global equilibrium that comes to about three to seven kilograms of tritium, of natural tritium, each year. Not tritium 3H that we're talking about, but natural tritium. Just completely different effects on the biotas and humans and species. Tritium initially, which is tritium 3H now, and Alvarez conveniently leaves that out for the whole story initially became a widespread man-made contaminant when it was spread across the globe by open-air nuclear weapons explosion conducted between 1945 and 63. Um, now, it wasn't just the open-air weapons explosion. In that period of 1945 to 1963, Hanford Nuclear Disaster Factory had dumped around 450 billion gallons into online trenches uphill from the Columbian River. But that's equal to a six foot aquarium, and we're talking about um, radioactive sludge, that a liter of it is many, many, many sieverts. And that's enough to kill everybody that walks past it for millions of years. So they dumped 450 billion gallons of it, which is equal to six feet wide, 518 feet tall wall or aquarium wrapped right around the entire planet and then some of lethal radiation. So you can be sure China done the same thing, Russia done the same thing, and the list goes on. So to only incinerate or in, insinuate or employ that 
weapons testing itself was the contributor is is really dishonest. Uh, tritium, uh, of course, can be, if you rain on fuel, you're just producing tritiated water all day. But the tritium that we're actually talking about from the reactors would have been catastrophic combinations. There. Rainfall in 93 found in the northern hemisphere to contain a thousand times more tritium than pre-nuclear industry background levels. Open-air nuclear weapons explosion released about 600 kilograms, 1,200 pounds, 6 billion curries. And a curry is 30, 37 billion times 80. Um, is a gram, say, right? So a gram would be about 80. I'm sorry, a curry is 37 billion, and a gram of that would be around 80. So divide 80 into 6 billion. And, but they're only acknowledging tritium. Their weapons released everything, not just tritium. Keep that in mind too, because but we're only talking about tritium. We're ignoring the massive amount of all the other horrific isotopes that were released into the environment to hunt everything with replicating cells for a billion years. In the decades since above ground nuclear testing ended. Nuclear power plants have added even more to the plant's inventories of tritium, the planet's inventory of tritium. For several years, U.S. powered reactors have been contaminating groundwater via large, unexpected, uh, which is not true, tritium leaks, which are hemorrhaging from degraded subsurface pipings and spent nuclear fuel storage pool infrastructure. The storage fuel pools what they're talking about is tritiated water boiling off every day, but it's because the fuel rods are still split in the atoms. Each liter is saturated with trillions and trillions and trillions of very harmful isotopes, and that is released directly into the environment. And the majority of nuclear power plants are surrounded with farms, so they can move the contaminants into your supermarkets. Uh, it serves many purposes, not just for the pharmaceutical industry, to falsely treat the victims from it. Um, but it's a genocide machine against humanity, but it's an omnicide machine against all the species. It affects every species. There's nothing has not a immune trigger can defend against it. And all fuel pools are, are hemorrhaging atoms from the fuel rods. They have billions of microscopic cracks in each of the rods. And this is why they're put into the pool because they're, they're very unstable after about 18 months. Unexpected, I mean, they're, of course, they not, there's all the seals, the piping, everything is hemorrhaging tritium. They can't contain it. And Canada's reactors are vicious producers of tritium. But whatever we see in tritium, we've got to multiply it by 600 to get all the other isotopes that we need to worry about. I'm just... I want to reinforce that because Alvarez is trying to lead you away from the reality by talking about uh, tritium as the only thing you got to worry about from the nuclear fuel storage ponds. They're, spent. they're not spent, they're just too fragile to use anymore. They're only about 2% of it was denigrated. But you, whatever the volume is when you put it in the reactor, it's the same volume you're going to take out of the reactor. It don't get smaller. It's not like a log where it's, there's very little left. This doesn't change. These are perpetual machines. And once you put it in the fuel pools, it's still producing the same atoms, except there's no containment. And so that hemorrhages into your environment. It truly is a death cult. There's no other way to describe it. It hates all species equally. So to talk about an event at Monticello Nuclear Power Plant on the Mississippi River, Minnesota, in November. But they didn't admit it until March of next year, which was this year. So they waited over four months. And so they had a whole public relation campaign ready to go, and then they came out 
all around Canada, United States with that story. And he said, only tritium got out. And don't worry, it never left the site. Now, it was minus 30 that whole time. So any, anything in the ground is going to run to the ocean. It can't soak up when everything is frost, right? And so they had to shut down the plant to fix and replace the piping, but there is no tritium pipes at these plants. So this is uh, this was high pressure stuff we're talking about. So this would have been saturated with curium and uranium, plutonium, and everything else, not tritium. So over four months later, if that's the actual true number, we'll never know. When he finally came out and said, "Oh, by the way, we lost four hundred thousand gallons, twelve hundred liters, or um, sixteen hundred liters, so one point six million liters," <coughs> and don't worry. We got it under control. And so it's, don't worry, we're going to put testing in the Mississippi River to check and see if anything got into the river. So a couple of weeks later, they rolled out these uh, one once-only tests. When it took samples from the river, sent it to some pro-nuclear industry laboratory, and lo and behold, they didn't find nothing. But if you're going to look for it, you would have looked for it the day that you knew it leaked, not four months later, four months, two weeks later, after you told people. And there's millions of people down in the river, the Mississippi depended upon it, the river for drinking water and, and showering, cooking and everything else, and, um, and tens of thousands of farms. And so, uh, but the biggest shock to the story is that they admitted it and told us is the biggest shock. And by telling you that only tritium got out, that's calling you, it's literally treating you like an idiot. They're literally talking to you like you're a two-year-old, for instance, where you're incapable of comprehending a structured uh, narrative. A good place to start limiting the negative effects of tritium is to significantly tighten drinking water standards. So, uh, Canada is, is vicious, the can-do reactors. The, the Nova Scotia or New Brunswick in the Bay of Fundy reactor is at least 16 million 400, 16 million 400 thousand trillion Beckles a year legally, which is more than probably all the European reactors combined and the French and a few other countries combined, just from a single reactor in Canada. And all can-do reactors in Canada uh, are brutal releases legally a year. But there's other releases from tritium, too, we'll talk about coming up. And that routine releases of airborne tritium are not trivial. He underscored a point by including a detailed atmospheric dispersion study commission indicating that tritium, which is not HTO's tritium 3H, Alvarez, your piece of scum, you, from the Braidwood nuclear power plant in Illinois, has been literally raining down from the gaseous release as it incorporates precipitation form tritium oxide, H2O. Now, this is tritium 3H. It's, it's, it's a special tritium. It's only found in reactors. This is not, this is not uh, natural stuff. This is anthropogenic man-made. Spent fuel storage pools are considered the largest source of the gaseous tritium releases. Around 1,000 spent fuel pools worldwide, and all the reactor cores in the fuel pools are still splitting atoms. And then, so that's tritiates the water, but the atoms are there too. All the uranium, all the plutonium, all the curium, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. <coughs> Every time we do a show now, I have a hot cup of tea to cut the rug in my throat. And instead, I forget to drink it till it's lukewarm, and I hate lukewarm tea. And I hate slurping but it's better than lukewarm tea. Spent 
fuel storage pools are disease factories. They're releasing about 120,000 a liter out of each one each day, and there's two in each building. And it's catastrophic numbers we're talking about. And it's unregulated. The largely unacknowledged health effects, there's 1,800 diseases, by the way, makes it clear that the impact of tritium on human health, especially when it's taken inside the body, because it's water, it can just soak right through your skin. Because when you get a shower, you, you soak up like one or two liters of water every time, right? So when it's taken inside the body, warranted much more attention and control than they've received until now. Well, the when it binds with your anything in your body, which is what it's going to do right away, it's organic, tri, what they call organic tritium. I don't know why they call it organic. Uh, they should well, I know why, but they should give it a more stronger name because it's very deadly. Once it binds with cells or DNA or chromosomes or something. It's very insidious isotope, and it pulses energy almost at speed of light every second for millions of years. And because there's so much of it, it, it also saturates your thyroid gland and all your organs because they're made of water. 39 states, 9 federal agencies. Like, there is no U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission that works to protect you. There is no Environmental Protection Agency that works to protect you from the nuclear industry, or the Department of Energy, or the Occupational Health Administration, OSHA, or the Consumers Product Safety Commission, the Food and Drug Administrations, Department of Agriculture, are all responsible for regulating tritium. And But they don't. And if it was harmless, then all of these wouldn't get a piece of the pie, would they? The highly scattered regulatory regime has been ineffective at limiting tritium contamination because you can't contain it. So the industry shouldn't exist, much less reducing it. For example, state and federal regulators have a clue as to how many of the some 2 million exit signs purchased in the United States and made luminous without electrical power by tritium have been illegally dumped. Two million exit signs. Remember, a teaspoon can t contaminate the drinking water for a million people for 120 years. Then people with these exercises, they just dump them in the local landfills, right? For decades, tritium signs each initially contained about 25 curries, which is a third of a gram, which is a stupid amount, by the way, of radioactivity. 25 trillion pico curries of tritium. And so, how many of them signs have you seen in your lifetime? How many do you think is abandoned to your local landfills? How many uh, have poisoned your landfills? Uh, you, you, need to, you need to worry about it because you have them in your community. And in communities where you might go to restaurants and eat food or stay in hotels, you have to worry that was dumped where it contaminated the drinking water of those communities. You got it. You should worry about that. You have a right to worry about your children not being saturated with these anthropogenic harmful for long past your life. One broken sign is enough to contaminate an entire community landfill or drinking water. And how many do you have in your community? What's the odds one of them got thrown in your local dump? Pretty fucking good, isn't it? There are no standards for tritium in the liquid that leaches from landfills, by the way. They got their bases covered. Despite the measurements taken in 2009 indicating levels of Pennsylvania landfills are thousands of times above background, 
this is time of tritium. But Pennsylvania landfills are going to be full of radioactive fallout from Three Mile Island. That stuff is never going to go away. The fallout. And it was huge fallout from that catastrophic event. Adding to the regulatory mess is the fact that the federal standard limiting drink tritium in drinking water only applies to public supplies and not to public or private wells. They're covering all the bases they can. In decades past, regulatory agencies have papered over the tritium contaminated problem by asserting when tritium leakage becomes a matter of public concern that the tritium doses humans might receive are too small to be of concern. And so these are garbage can diagnoses when you hear that. Those people need to be removed from their positions immediately. The journalists should lose their degree for regurgitating such a false narrative, a very dangerous, lethal narrative. Despite growing evidence that tritium is harmful in ways that fall outside the basic framework for radiation protection, agencies such as the Non-Regulatory Commission, also known as the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, remain frozen in time when it becomes the tritium regulation. The NRC and other regulating agencies are sticking to an outdated premise that tritium is a mild radioactive contaminant that emits the weak beta particles that cannot penetrate the outer layers of the skin. Uh, they're talking about the energy. So if tritium was a drop of water, your hand was by it, it couldn't penetrate your skin. But if it lands on your skin, it can easily soak into your skin, for instance. And if it lands in your food source, it binds to the organic of your food, and it assimilates now readily when you consume it or your f children or your friends or your loved ones and then bioaccumulates because it's in an organic state where it's binded to something that you're going to consume for instance cannot p penetrate the outer layer of the skin uh, and it's such a dishonest incredible deceitful way to talk about this it's such a despicable hateful person that wrote that and acknowledged that lie without warning you. When tritium is taken inside the body, half is quickly excreted within 10 days. No, once it gets in your body, because now it's bonding with uh, your cells and everything else, and this can cross the placenta, right, in your blood barriers. For example, drinking tritiated water, half is quickly excreted within 10 days. That one almost, that would have been pretty loud. I'd turn it down for you. The agency pointed out the radiation doses are tiny. It's the same one that hasn't protected you for 80 years. And the NRC implies its risk of tritium ingestion causing cancer is small. Again, this is completely, this is Alvarez. This is completely dishonest way to frame this narrative because there's 1,800 diseases. Once it's in your body, it binds organically with, your, with something in your body, and it's not going away. And to only acknowledge cancer is that's as criminal as you can be when you know the difference. And Alvarez, Robert Alvarez, Bob, knows the difference. Evidence of harm to workers, no, no offense to any Bobs out there, evidence of harm to workers handling tritium is growing. And I mean, the criteria for laboratories, double gloves, respiratory uh, kits, you name it. The risk of dying from leukemia among workers at the Serrano River plant following exposure to tritium is eight times greater than from exposure to gamma radiation. <coughs> Think about that statement. And Savannah Riverside is one great big stupid disease factory. It's everywhere for 80 years, right? There's nowhere safe on that site. So implying that the risk of dying from leukemia, blood cancer among the workers, is eight times higher than near you, or from gamma, that's an incredible statement.
It's an absurd statement, see, of the dangers, warning you about the dangers you don't normally hear, is what I mean by that. It's absurd that you don't hear other people acknowledging it. And this, this guy was an expert, and not Alvarez, he's the guy who's, who's trying to dilute the documentation. Over the past several years, studies of workers exposed to tritium consistently showed significant excess levels of chromosome damage. I, so I find it hard to imagine Savannah River's site, you're only getting exposed to tritium. This is why I'm have uh, this uh, skepticism, shall we say. The contention that tritium is mildly radioactive does not hold when it is taken to the body as tritiated water. This is the dominant means for exposure. No, it's airborne too, right? The Canadian can do reactors are releasing just each day. It's absurd amounts we're talking about per reactor. We're not, you know, we're not... It, we're not acknowledging all the other incredible harmful isotopes that will have to be there if you got tritium. The Defense Nuclear Facility Safety Board, which advises the degenerate U.S. Energy Department about safety of all things, at the nation's defense nuclear sites, which are disease factories and don't have any regulatory going on outside of rudimentary, informed the Secretary of Energy in June 2019 that the tritiated water vapor, airborne, represents a significant risk to those exposed to it. Of course it does. It's antibiotic man-made. Your body has no immune trigger to, to defend against it. As it, uh, it tries to build a sarcophagus, a tumor around everything. As its dose consequences to an exposed individual is 15,000 times 20,000 times higher than that from the equal, equivalent amount of tritium gas. Shocking, really. And as it decays, tritium emits nearly 400 trillion energetic disintegrations per second. UCLA Medical School describes the disintegrations as explosive packages of energy that are highly efficient at forming complex, potential lethal DNA double-strand breaks. McBride underscores this concern at an event sponsored by the National Institute of Health, where he stated the damage to DNA can occur within minutes to hours. <coughs> Not over your lifetime, but minutes to hours. And your body has to attack everything every second. And it pulses energy every second in every direction, almost at the speed of light. No matter how it's taken into the body, a fact sheet from the Department of Energy Department's Aragon National Laboratories, tritium is uniformly distributed through all biological fluids within one or two hours. So it spreads symmetrically throughout your entire body within about two hours once it enters your body in, a, in a, any kind of amount. And remember, a teaspoon can contaminate the drinking water supplies for a million people for 120 years. So to suggest that this is somehow is harmless and innocuous and benign is deceitful and dishonest and deceptive and criminal at best murderous in reality. During that short time, the Defense Nuclear Facility Safety Board points out that the combination of a rapid intake and short biological half-life means a large fraction of radiological doses acutely delivered within hours to days. Again, the evidence is literally overwhelming. You should buy the book. You see his name up there, made K-H-I-J-A-N-I. You'll, f you'll find a story and get his name, look up the book and read it yourself rather than trust Alvarez. In addition, the cancer range of outcomes that can follow tritium exposure includes prenatal and various forms of genomic damage. And the principal constant value holding dose reconstruction and in regulatory compliance together is reliance on the reference man who's a healthy Caucasian male around 20 to 30 years old, who 
who I have nothing in common with, by the way, who exist only in the abstract world, who exist only in the abstract world, and use the reference man standards give rise to obvious and major questions. What radiation dose limit is necessary to protect the reference man from serious damage? And what about the protection of more vulnerable forms of human life for birds or insects or mammals or animals or flora and flora or bacteria and fungus? Is infinitely smaller number we're talking about, see? The need to protect the fetus and embryos from the eternal exposures to tritium a need largely being sidestepped by radiation protection authorities. And tritium replaces non-radioactive hydrogen and water, tritium-3H, eh? the principal source of tritium exposure. He writes, to pointing to the unassailable evidence that tritium can easily cross the placenta and irradiate developing fetuses in utero, thereby raising the risk of birth defects, miscarriages, malformations, and other problems. And he's not alone in such assessments. According to 2022, last year's medical expert consensus report on radiation protection for healthcare professionals in Europe, the greatest risk of pregnancy loss from radiation exposure during the first two weeks of pregnancy. Well, between two to eight weeks after conception, the embryo is most susceptible to development of congenital malformations because this is the period of development. In the United States, the Nuclear Non-Regulatory, Non-Nuclear Regulatory Commission, which is the nuclear industry, because they don't regulate anything, effort to reduce exposure limits and protect pregnant women and their fetuses is described as best as foot dragging. And by comparison, that required limits for a pregnant worker in Europe to be reassigned for further exposures, one-fifth of the U.S. standards and was adopted nearly 20 years ago. Long-term environmental retention. A 2019 study put forward for the first ever empirical evidence of very long-term environmental retention of organically bound tritium-3H is an entire river system deposited by fallout from atmospheric nuclear weapons exposure. Explosions. Organically bound tritium in an entire river system. Well, a teaspoon can contaminate the drinking water for a million people for a year, but it's radioactive for 120 years. And when it's organically bound, which it is when it comes into contact with molecules and cells and DNA and chromosomes, you know, stuff that humans have in their bodies too. When released into the environment, the atoms can replace the hydrogen atoms in organic molecules to form organically bound tritium, which is found in soil, river sediments, vegetation, a wide variety of food, and me and you, and everything else. It's been more than half a century since the ratification of the Limited Test Ban Treaty, and the tritium released through the nuclear weapons testing has undergone significant decay. But because of the long retention of organically bound tritium, the long retention of organically bound tritium, so let's not be mistaken about this stuff when they say you remove it from your body right away. That's outrageous lies. In greater than expected concentration still remains a contaminant of concern. So, for instance, despite its 12.3 year half-life, and there's 10 half-lives, a much larger amount of organically bound tritium from nuclear tests than previously assumed is locked in the Arctic permafrost, raising concern about widespread contamination as global warming melts the Arctic. The French Alps were hot spots. In, in the snow from Chernobyl, hot spots. We're talking real serious issue. 
Organically bound tritium can reside in the body far longer than tritiated water to consequentially greater negative effect. Right, and so, right, uh, by using the word tritiated instead of tritium 3H, right, instead of acknowledging that that is anthropogenic man made, they're calling it tritium and tritiated. There, it's di there's a difference. Nuclear weapons, nuclear power, and tritium. Well, nuclear weapons increase their power by um, megatons by just using tritium. The pr tritium problem has several, and uh, the fusion reactors are going to be brutal. The tritium releases, it's like it's unbelievable. And they can't conquer it. Because you're talking about 300 million degree temperatures, there's no other way to cool it. If you're going to use helium, the only way you can produce that kind of helium is with nuclear decay. So again, the emissions are going to be ridiculous, and they already are. They're already they're untenable. You can't have a planet with nuclear on it, because the planet will die. If you shut off nuclear plants right now, all of them stored everything. Sarcophagus for a billion years. There was so much released into the environment, humanity can't survive the future. And the species have no hope. They're underway because of the pulse event from Fukushima already. The tritium problem has several dimensions relate directly to the world's current and future efforts via this nuclear power and nuclear weapons. Now that the nuclear power reactors are closing down, especially in the aftermath of Fukushima, dispose of large volumes of tritium contaminated water into the lakes, the rivers, the oceans, becoming a source of growing concern around the world. It's completely dishonest to frame it that way. You can't contain tritium. It's hemorrhaging from all of the reactors worldwide, all the time. And like, the world needs to do something to have something for the future, so the future generation can exist. The Japanese government has approved the dumping of about 230 million gallons of radioactive water. Again, right, they're, they're refusing to acknowledge the buildings are destroyed. Alvarez. Once it incorporates into the water, tritium 3H, which Alvarez, uh, Robert Alvarez refuses to acknowledge, is extraordinarily difficult, if not impossible. It's impossible. To suggest that that never happened is Alvarez should be stripped of his degree stored in 1,300 tanks. They can't make up their mind, eh? There was 1,000 tanks in 2013. They have 1,000 tanks in 2019. The whole idea was to manipulate you into believing that they have it under control and that nothing got out when everything is gone. It's all gone. What's left here should have been razzed to the ground but they wanted to hoodwink you, so they kept the stumps and then pretend they're getting the fuel out of the pools. Then there's the matter of boosting the efficiency to destructive power of nuclear weapons with tritium gas. It used as dominated demand for the isotope because of, and uh, fusion is dependent upon tritium too. Because 5% of the tritium thermal nuclear warheads decay each year and has to periodically be replenished. <coughs> And over the past 70 years, an estimated 225 kilograms of tritium was produced in U.S. government's reactors, like not, not your normal reactor, but the government's private reactors, principally at Savannah River in South Carolina, the nuclear wasteland of South Carolina. And those reactors were shuttered in 1988, and since 2003, tritium supplies for the U.S. nuclear warheads are provided by two Tennessee Valley Authority 
nuclear power plants. You get it? And the radiation of lithium target elements in the reactor has fallen short of meeting demand because of excess tritium, tritium leakage into the reactor coolant, which is expelled each day, right? And because there's a million gallons a minute going through the, uh, the cooler reactors, 4,500 tons a minute. And so they're just pumping the tritium into that water. And that's going straight into the rivers, lakes, estuaries, and oceans where they're situated. And they're using lithium at your nuclear power plants to make weapons. <laughs> you hear, oh, nuclear, gun, nuclear power got nothing to do with nuclear weapons. Well, what, is, what the fuck is the Tennessee Valley Authority doing then? Since uh, June 2019, Defense Nuclear Facility Safety Board, this is some sick kind of joke, has taken the Energy Department to task for its failure to address the risk of severe fire involving tritium processing storage facilities at Savannah River site, which they, they spent, I don't know how many billions of years trying to build a mixed oxide fuel processing facility there, which is legal, right, to have it in your reactors, but the government can make exceptions for themselves, so they did. But they're such, they're so stupid, they couldn't even build one, thank goodness, thank goodness they couldn't. According to the board, such a fire may have 40% chance of occurring during 50 years of operations and could result in potentially lethal worker doses greater than 6,000 rims. 12,000 times. So why are we talking about RIMS this day and age? 1,200 times the annual occupational exposure limit. 1,200 times. Doses to the public would not be inconsequential. Severe fire involving tritium processing storage facilities. Well, you know, the more of these sites you build, the more you guarantee a massive nuclear accident, you're guaranteeing it. And history shows this just to be true. And and when you build these experimental ones, usually uh, two or three out of the first ten are going to fail dramatically. The Energy Department is, well, that's what history shows anyway. The Energy Department is under pressure from the Nuclear Weapons Establishment, the Military Industrial Complex, UN, to step up demand for tritium. Unless there is a marked increase in the planned production of tritium in the next few years, the 2018 U.S. Nuclear Posture Review concluded our nuclear capabilities will inevitably be below requirements. So this is why you've seen them giving life extensions to these old, fragile, brittle reactors that were supposed to be shut down because of that exact issue. Because you're talking about high-pressure reactors, so you don't want to be using fatigued or brittle metal at high, very, very high pressures at 1,000 PSI past your life expectancy, which is originally was 30 years. That was, that was the charter for these reactors was originally for 30 years. And it's just the military-industrial complex, United Nations, that got them the extensions. United Nations is a root all evil from what we're seeing. The Energy Department estimates it will take 15 to 20 years to achieve a major multi-billion overhaul of its tritium production infrastructure. 15 to 20 years. Like if you, you know, if you're honest and you look at all the Superfund sites that they have, these multi tens of billions of dollars disaster sites, like Hanford, okay, I don't know the exact numbers, three, four hundred billion dollars he spent on it. But they need at least another seven hundred billion. And they estimate it to be at least three hundred years before they actually do um, get the site to where it's not lethal all over the place. And you're talking about a 585 mile nuclear wasteland. And it's a hundred percent nuclear wasteland. 
that feeds all of it feeds into the Columbia River, which is the drinking water for millions of people downriver, and ends up in the Pacific Ocean. That doesn't even matter anymore because of Fukushima. Meanwhile, the quest for fusion energy highlights a startling fact that the amount of tritium required to fuel a single fusion reactor should an economic fusion power plant ever, ever, ever be created will be likely far greater than the amount produced by all fission reactors and open-air bomb tests since the 1940s. So they're talking about going to the moon to get helium-3 because they think, they think, like there's a theory, someone got a theory, and they need it though to prove it, right? So how come they haven't went back to the moon since the moon landing? How come nobody's gone? No, how come there's no bases there? Why, why are you sending all these rovers to the solar system but not using the moon? That makes zero sense. A full-scale 3,000 megawatt electric fusion reactor is estimated to burn about 150 grams or kilograms of tritium a year. 150 kilograms, which is much tritium, 3H, not, you well, can't use natural tritium, it has to be man-made, which is more tritium than was natural pre-nuclear industry they need each year. And they're going to put, they're basically breeder reactors, they'll produce their own fuel, but they can't reclaim all their own fuel. So if they're going to claim 150 kilograms, 300 plus pounds. They're probably going to produce 7,000 pounds of it released into the environment. And so they need to they need to get rid of any regulatory hurdles before they get to that point. So they need to lie constantly and, and misrepresent every facet of tritium or there's no dreams of ever having their fabled fusion. They're not going to have their fusion. The design they're using in the fusion is from a paper from 1904. <coughs> and all fusion designs are based on that one paper. And the original author has been dead a long time. And, and this is one thing we noticed with the nuclear industry. Uh, let's go back, say, 30, 40 years. They haven't created anything new in nuclear or fusion in the 30, last 30 to 40 years. The original architects... That was the only design, and it's not the right design. And that's why you're talking about fusion today, right? Because the original reactors, the fission reactors, are the worst possible combination. And one of my big fears was that we develop, we, we, we find a planet hidden away that we can reach. And we go there and there's eight million species, and we're like, this is amazing. It's beautiful. And the nuclear industry was like, yeah, well, let's get a reactor up there right away. And then that planet is doomed because you can't contain it. And that's why the nuclearproctologist.org is anti-space for anthropogenic man-made nuclear because it's not from the solar system. It's not created by the sun. It's not, it's not stardust. The, the anthropogenic man-made radiation we call it man-made because it's unique to us. The cost for a one-year batch of tritium fuel for a fusion reactor based on the current prices would be $4.5 billion a year, each year. $4.5 billion. We can do everything with geothermal. Why are we looking at tritium? Why are we looking at uh, fusion and nuclear? We could do the exact same thing with geothermal. Every community could be running on its own geothermal plant. It's so simple, it's so easy, and it's so doable uh, that if you do it, then nuclear has no, will have no right to exist. See? And so they'll scuttle everything and everybody on the planet before they give up their genocidal, omnicidal nuclear industries. An annual loss to the environment, well, there's 9,000 facets of nuclear, 9,000 industries acknowledged in nuclear. 
An annual loss to the environment from a single fusion reactor would dwarf the release of tritium from all facilities that currently dot the global landscape. In other words, the single fusion reactor will produce more tritium than all nuclear plants and fuel pools and resources on the entire planet currently. And evidence is mounting not just in regard to increased health risk from the tritium 3H contaminated water and from the tritium 3H organically bound tritium 3H, 3H, but also as related to the harm tritium 3H can visit on to the unborn. But don't, like see, almost all the, if not all the stories, literally all the stories are focused on humans and pretending that none of the species, which are millions of times a lot of more vulnerable to the same dose, at the same time it's become clear the regulations of treating the United States is grossly insufficient to the current risk from treating contamination, not to mention the future risk that could arise if treating production use associated leakages, because they can't contain it, arise. Of course it's going to arise. The government is not involved in disclosing, this is South Korea, the government is not involved in disclosing the Japanese wastewater policy report. The South Korean government had no involvement in the non-disclosure process with the research committees deciding to keep the report confidential. So they'd, they'd done research on the releases from Japan, they decided to keep it confidential. But you paid them to do it, you gave them the authority to, to do it, you gave them the equipment to do it. That was their job, not to hide it away and say, fuck you. How many times will your employees say fuck you before you fire them? Because the minute you stop treating measure your employees, the minute you lost your fucking country. However, Park said that an in-depth natural scientific analyst of the effects of the discharge wastewater was not included in the report, which was what the report was about in the first place. The degenerate South Korean non-government on Friday responded to criticism raised by the opposition to DPP on the non-disclosures of the collaborative research report conducted by the National Research Institute on the Discharge of Wastewater from the Fukushima nuclear power plant, conducted by the National Research Institute, wouldn't disclose their findings to the people that paid for it and hired them and like their contempt is something else. Well, the contempt is absolute, isn't it? It's a complete disregard for everybody, including themselves and their loved ones and their friends and their families. The degenerate South Korean government had no involvement in the non-disclosure process with the research committee deciding to keep the report confidential. This is endless, endless stories like this, unfortunately. Every country does the same thing. They were, if you try to look, they stab you in the eye. The purpose of the research is to minimize the social, economics, and environmental impacts of the wastewater discharge and prepare response strategies to ensure the health and safety of the people. Japan's ambassador promotes Fukushima food safety at party for EU officials in Brussels. So the ambassadors at the embassies, the embassies is who you're going to contact, right? If you're trying to find out all the businesses in a country that you got something in common with, you contact the embassy of that country, they'll send you a list of every single person that sells their product. And so that's why that's, that's absurd that you see that happening. Promote sushi and sake from Fukushima to EU. Why take the chance? The buildings really did melt down. The, the buildings really did blow up. The reactors really did lose their inventories. The food really actually is contaminated. And they're so vicious and they're so, so and, they, and they just don't give a shit about you. 
that they show that picture there, not the two of them, but just this picture here, in the main newspapers, in the main medias, saying the farmers, poor farmers are being stigmatized with people spreading terrible rumors that their food might be irradiated. They're harvesting it right alongside of thousands and thousands and thousands of one-ton bags of radiation. That's not media. I don't know what the fuck it is, but it ain't media. That can't be a media. That's not got nothing to do with the word media. Look it up sometime. Prime Minister Han comparing scientific release to the Hiroshima atomic bomb is agitation. He must be Chinese. I can't remember. So scientific release, sci scientific, like claiming that anything coming out of this nuclear wasteland scientifically approved is a whole different level of dishonesty. Japan does not give the opportunity to scientists with different opinions. Japan wouldn't let anybody else take independent samples. They won't let anybody else in there with cameras, for God's sakes. This is the international, supposed to be the, the great watchdog of 195 nations, right? And they confirm safe tritium level. Safe tritium level. Safe tritium level. So the buildings are completely destroyed. They're 100% destroyed. Reactor 3 to your right actually went poof. It ejected the reactor cores and the fuel pools with decades of reactor cores. The plumes covered the entire planet with less than a month, every one of them. None of them are tritium, by the way. So, like, they're ignoring, well, they're not ignoring it. They're, they decided to now pretend that this never happened. That's what tritium means. They're saying that never happened. Is there any reason you would use the word tritium? And if the International Atomic Energy Agency is the headline and going to confirm that tritium is the only thing you're worried about, and that's what that headline is doing, you, you are in a twilight zone. That's an actual twilight zone. All of these people are protesting tritium. So it's pretty easy to fall in that trap in that country, pretend that that didn't happen, pretend that didn't happen, and pretend to worry about the last thing you should be worried about. International Atomic Energy Agency confirmed safe tritium levels in Fukushima water despite the dump. Well, they haven't stopped dumping it. The buildings are completely destroyed, for goodness sakes. And like an idiot in desperation, I come out here every day with my hat in my hand, my head bowed, in, in the hopes that the world might come to its senses. And the reactor core and the fuel pools are at the top of the building. The, the building that you see there is reactor four, for instance. That should have been leveled. That, they shouldn't have left that much there. Don't you think? Let's look at that building for a second. If you're going to go rent an apartment and they said you got to go in that door right over there, would you walk away? If your kid moved out of your home and just to show you the picture, said, Mom, we're going to put a set of stairs there, that's where we're going to be living. Would you check him in to a hospital for psychiatric uh, help? When you see these plume models covering the planet, look at March the 18th. That's uh, three days after the first, the last explosion up to the top. Uh, March the 27th, 22nd is seven days later, a radioactive fallout. March the 25th, which is... 15 days, uh, I'm sorry, is 14 days after tsunami and 11 days. After 11 days, almost the entire planet is covered in radioactive fallout. And 
but 27 days, April the 7th, it's, it's a uniform distribution. None of it matters because the International Atomic Energy Agency said abracadabra, you're a cadabra. International Atomic Energy Agency confirms safe tritium levels in buildings that don't even exist anymore. They confirm it's safe tritium. And you think you've got a future, you silly, silly. By the way, tritium, we, uh, which man-made tritium, not tritium, but look at the laws here, or hydrogen 3H, is a rare, no fatal cancers have ever been observed below 1,500 um, millisieverts in humans, 1.5 sieverts in humans, but I don't know if you can get 1.5 sieverts of tritium. By any form of ionizing radiation, let alone tritium, a single atom can kill you in 30, 40 years because your body attacks it for the rest of your life and builds a tumor around it. The, and the effects are instant and prolonged for your extension for the rest of your life. let alone tritium weak. So it's a really despicable thing that those people put that up there on the search engine. Tr there's so many ways they're getting, they got so much tritium, look at all the ways they're getting rid of it, and your watches, your compasses, your exit signs, and many, many more. And Canada's one of the biggest proliferators of these signs, and just one of them's enough to contaminate your drinking water for 120 years. Tritium, and you got all kinds of other ways to make signs. You don't need tritium anymore. You know, batteries are really good this day and age. Tritium inventories of the world's ocean and their implications. Tritium inventories of the world's oceans. 1976. They calculated there was, now this is not tritium 3H, this is natural stuff that there was 107 plus minus 21 kilograms of tritium were present in the Pacific Ocean in the 70s, but that's after the nuclear industries of the 40s, see? A total of 300 plus minus 80 kilograms of tritium was present on Earth's surface in the 1970. So that's 500 kilograms plus minus uh, 90 kilograms or something. This indicates that about 550 plus minus 160 kilograms of tritium has been produced by nuclear detonations at that point. But, you know, we're, we're pretending uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, and everything else doesn't exist. We're just talking about tritium. But you've got, always got to have that in your mind, but that, that exists. And you can't have one without the other. The reason it's tritiated is because of the uranium, plutonium, americium, neptuniums, and all the other lethal doses of isotopes. Evidence for tritium persistent as organically bound forms in river sediment since the past nuclear weapons test. Uh, 2019. Current understandings of organically bound tritium in the environment. December 2013. It's become increasingly recognized that organically bound tritium is the more significant tritium fraction with respect to understanding the tritium behavior in the environment. And there are many different terms. And this is the only, this is literally the last one you're worried about. Look how bad this one is. <coughs> That's the only reason I'm going through all this is so you can understand even though it's the worst one, uh, the last one you should worry about, you still have to worry significantly and worry about it. So, tritiated water cannot bioaccumulate in the environment. Of course it can. It assimilates in the plants, in the humans, in the food source, and everything else. 
We're talking about organically bound tritium. It must be clearly specified whether it's the food chain, samples, or organic molecules that have been labeled for research purposes that has been referring to. Because there's so many discrepancies, right? Tritiated organics and solutable organically bound tritium. Solutable organically bound tritium, non exchangeable organically. So there's many, many facets which makes this. Um, uh, you have to worry about every one of them. They have done like, if if I got a folder with eighteen hundred studies on Chernobyl, but none of the studies are what you you would think normally. They study so many facets. It's it's extremely hard. If I had a if I had a depiction of a human body with the arrows of each thing they're studying. You're talking about 1,800 arrows pointed at the human body that they study. And there's a hell of a lot more than that. Tritiated water cannot bioaccumulate in the environment. However, it's not clear whether or not this is the case for organically bound tritium. Every time I hear that lie, it drives me nuts. They have limited organically bound tritium studies mostly resulting from investigation in the corrupted country most corrupted country on the planet is Canada when it comes to nuclear discharge of tritium in environment are forecast increase due to changes in the fuel management methods at nuclear disease factories and operating of the new tritium emitting facilities the more you got the more chance you're gonna have a massive accident modeling tritium 3h <coughs> and 14 carbon transfer transfer to farm animals and their products under steady state conditions. Uh, ends up in a feed, tritium in their water. There are a few published values describing the transfer of tritium and carbon, radioactive, anthropogenic, man made isotopes feed to animals derived food products. Well, of course there is, because you can screw an industry with the truth, see? Eh? Dumping doubts, releasing Fukushima, and they're showing these little tanks, which are counted as the thousand tanks, by the way. Are these little tanks? <laughs> they're like, oh, no, there's a thousand large tanks. <coughs> Most disgusting industry on the planet is nuclear by an unfathomable margin, orders of magnitudes above anything else in the universe. The Pacific Ocean already has 8.4 kilograms of the substance compared to 3 grams of the total tritium in Fukushima wastewater. So again, that's another study where they're talking about, now they're ta instead of 2.2 grams of tritium in Fukushima, they're saying 3 grams. Pointed out by no less than such scientists as the Woods Hole Oceanographic Sack of Shit Ken Abusler. What's the odds? Really, what's the odds that monster showed up? He's everywhere, I noticed, for the last week, eh? Woods Hole Oceanographic is back for one more cut of your throats. But some in the nuclear environmental science fraternity are wondering what the fuss is all about. Though their rebuttals hardly inspire optimism, University of Portsmouth, Jim Smith. So the University of Portsmouth has done everything it can to strangle humanity and the 8 million species. And using butt plug Jim Smith, who we covered how many times? It's a ridiculous thing. Here's a Sir Cream professor. This was the original story. 
on July the 13th, 2023. Uh, he's a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering, so you know right away he's a mass murderer. He's a professor, so his job is to murder you. He said, Fukushima plant includes approximately 2.2 grams of tritium. So that's the first time I heard that. <coughs> July the 13th was the date. And now everybody's doing it, right? The discharge is like throwing three grams of sugar into the sea. And we actually done a poll just about him because it was we never heard anybody that insane before. So this story, dumping, releasing Fukushima water, talking about three grams, is a piggyback off the July story, talking about 2.2 grams, which has been regurgitated, 2.2 grams, which uh, which is 0 0.06 grams a year. They're going to dump into the ocean. And so everything is hunky-dory. And, and, of course, the only problem with that story is they're not, they refuse to acknowledge the buildings are destroyed and lost their inventories. So when Florida, remember a couple of years ago, Florida, 2021, they had a wastewater former phosphorus plant and they're worried about the contaminants because one of the dams was very weak. And they can't filter phosphorus, which is a billion times bigger than the tritium or uranium or plutonium or americium or anything else. So if they can't filter that, how can they filter anthropogenic man-made radiation? If you can filter and anthropogenic man-made radiation, how come nobody else on the planet, after 12 years, has picked up the technology and said, this is wonderful? By the way, Fukushima operator accused of cover-up. They refused to let anybody have a sample. And there was allegedly 18 nuclear scientists from South Korea went there last, uh, in July. And they, weren't, they never brought their own cameras. They weren't allowed to have them. And they never took any samples on a fact-finding mission. By the way, tritium-3H is neutron-rich. Twice as many protons. Neutrons is proton. That's quite the statement. It's neutron-rich. So it can radiate other things. It's in your body, it can radiate your blood, see? Operations involving tritium, moving tritium are rigorously controlled by approved procedures because it's not benign or innocuous or harmless. Extensive training and qualifications of the staff was an important element in the program. Tritium is also a byproduct of production of electricity by nuclear disease factories. You're going to penetrate about 6.0 millimeters of air, which is about 0.23 of an inch, which is enough to kill trillions of cells with every pulse in somebody's body. Because it's pulsing almost at the speed of light, like any gammas, alphas, neutrons, and betas do, right? This is why they're so dangerous. And they do it every second. How many millimeters in one inch? The answer is 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So what don't sound like a lot when it's in your body is enough to wreck your organs your DNA and your chromosomes permanently and perpetually long past your lifespan. And so tritium can only penetrate 6.0 millimeter of air is simply meant to disarm you, make you complacent. Drinking large amounts of alcohol will reduce the biological half-life of water in the body because you'll sweat a lot of it out. But if it's organically bound, it might not leave. And if it's in your body, it's organically bound. But exposure to radiation increases risk for a range of diseases, 
and genetic disorders. They figure around 1,800 diseases can be triggered by anthropogenic man-made radiation. Radiation protection by pretreatment uh, with heavy water. So almost partly treated, they were given heavy water to ingest for 12 days before they were irradiated with 8.5 sieverts of cobalt 60. But 42% 40, of the control animals died from bone marrow failure. But all the mice that drank heavy water before nuclear exposure for 12 days survived whole body gamma radiation of 8.5 grays, which I, I find that, we, I don't know what the scenario is. It's a, it's a sniff. It, well, the mice don't live very long. If they lived long, then it would show up over a few years minimum. Despite, but it is interesting, right, that the heavy water protected them. IAEA confirms safe tritium levels in Fukushima water despite the dump. Well, they've never stopped dumping it. They've been dumping it nonstop for 12 years and for the next 12,000 years. You can't contain it. But for the International Atomic Energy to come out and say they confirm safe levels of tritium after nuclear meltdowns, they should be hung in the street like common criminals. This represents the first, the first in 12 years, samplings, independent samplings, analysts of water in the area. So they're claiming that the International Atomic Energy Agency, who hasn't been there for 12 years, but there five times this year to promote the fake story, are getting samples, not at the site, but offshore. This is what they're telling you. I don't even believe they're on site. Indicating the tritium levels are below. Why are you talking about tritium, if you're going to be honest? Why would you mention tritium? Tritium is the very last one you would mention if you were being honest. And because there's zero possibility they're going to be honest. Below Japan's operational limits. Again, the onus is on Japan. The International Atomic Energy Agency is not a regulatory agency. They can't compel or demand nothing. The International Atomic Energy has published results of its first analyst radioactive isotopes. And so, uh, and when you say isotopes, then you're talking about lots of different isotopes. But that's not what, that's the illusion. What they're talking about is tritium. They're not looking for tritium. Because if they were looking for tritium, that single would be drowned out by all the other isotopes that are constantly hemorrhaging from that site. samples like when you look at the buildings and someone tells you tritium it's okay to want to punch them in the fucking mouth okay <coughs> you're because you're dealing with a f dealing with degenerate scum let's put it that way <coughs> Uh, turn me volume down. I'm getting better at being polite for everybody. Listen, your life is in danger. And you're lying on a scale the average person can't possibly comprehend. I'm doing my best. And so those that do find me originally will know there's something real bad going on. But after a week or two, they're going to be incredibly educated and able to articulate the issue on their own. This way, I'm excluded from all debate. I 
I'm not going to entertain their lies. TEPCO publishes the daily results of Tritium Analyst. They're not even looking for anything else. <laughs> I just called to say I hate your guts, humans. That's the International Atomic Energy Agency's song, right? Japan's insane, immoral, illegal, radioactive dumping. Again, the quickest way to beat the nuclear industry up is with the facts. And the facts are the buildings were gone 12 years ago. Not putting that into the equation. This might cheer you up. Taiwan emerged public media under the Defense Ministry to combat cognitive warfare. So that's takeover, right? That's Orwellian as it gets. That's 100% uh, takeover. They already control the media. We know that. But that that's like saying, fuck it. Uh, guess who? They're, guess who they're targeting? Hang on. I'll get there. Th these medias include the military news agency. And Youth Daily News, Youth Daily News, they're targeting the children. And like Taiwan to merge public media under the, the, the military industrial complex in Taiwan. And, ta and if you look at what Taiwan done um, to the natives, the original natives of Taiwan, they forced them out onto an island and, and segregated them from society, shunned them from society, poked them away as um, so they needed a nuclear dump decades later and they said to, and the island is called Orchard Island, and so they needed this dump and they said to the natives, we like to put a canning factory for tuna, sardines, and salmon, and um, ha, um, and other seafood species. But we're going to have a kickback for everybody in the communities. You're all going to get a little piece of the royalty. I think it worked out to like it was quite a quite a chunk of money to people that had no income. And it was a real, you know, it's a real, the idea was to get them dependent upon it. Because eventually the truth would come out that it, this big facility the government had under Ireland wasn't a canning factory. It was a nuclear dump. And they're still fighting today trying to get that off to Ireland. But they're hooked on that money, see? They're dependent upon that, on that bursary every month. And they have no way of replacing it. Um, but they need 10 times that to deal with the diseases and illnesses, not immune diseases that have showed up because of having these cancer facilities under little, little land. Uh, Emily Attack beams as she holds hands with her handsome nuclear scientist, her handsome nuclear, handsome nuclear scientist. Handsome, evil nuclear scientist. It's uh, obviously the nuclear industry promoted that. And whoever took the picture wasn't at their dinner table, were they? Birds with Russia's generators for nuclear plants was under rocks listed. Listing, you friggin' morons. I mean, listing, not listed. It's listing. Oh, shit, eh? These things are heavy. 
like 150,000 pounds each or something. I think I've done the math, actually, I did. Yeah, 300 tons, to, uh, each of them are 300 tons. So they each has 600,000 pounds. <laughs> that cheered me up, actually. Hopefully it sinks. And then the people there gets a few more days in their life before that thing shows up. Uh, Siri Suwa. My apologies for butchering your name or anybody else. Is to lead a protest against a new nuclear power plant. They'll lock him up in a concentration camp right away when he catches them. Political activist has urged the locals to rally against a 20 megawatt nuclear reactor. 20 megawatt. On the banks of the river. The government first pushed for a 10 megawatt nuclear reactor project. So I got no idea what that is. The f There's no reactors that small, right? The, the, the small modular reactors, they're screeching about every couple of months to get investors to buy their stocks don't exist the closest to this new scale they've been up and running for 19 years they still haven't built one and they've gone through billions they all got uh, parking lots full of uh, hot rods and everything else big beautiful houses big chunks of land i know because they called up and mocked me on more than one occasion the new scale bunch right the scum, right? They are scumbags. Uh, the project was ground to a halt in 2010 due to corruption and resistance from the residents. In 2017, attempts to rebuild a nuclear reactor were revived only for the project to go in limbo again. Now they're doing it again. They're one hundred percent gonna contaminate everything, including that precious, beautiful, wonderful river that they got. And um I don't know where that's to, my apologies. I did kinda remember it. No, I can't remember exactly where I get to look that up because that's it's important. In Bangkok? Vietnam, during Vietnam. I, I hate to say it because I'm not sure, so. But I will find out. Australian Navy pursues nuclear submarines and AI powered ghost sharks. These uh, artificial intelligence powered um, kamikaze underwater drones. Australia. Australia. Australia was uh, overtaken by the military industrial complex. They have seven of the ten biggest weapons producer in the country. And they have a vicious appetite. And so, what's the price of these reactors again? Each one is going to cost $28 billion. <laughs> Australia got no their electricity is true to roof there. They got the best spot on the planet for renewable energy. They got a whole continent all to themselves, right? They have wicked geothermal. They have unbelievable geothermal there. And the nuclear industry is screeching for nuclear power plants because they want their own Industry, that's big money, a lot of people, and generational. And they'll destroy everybody and everything to get their way to us. That's their routine, right? And they're firmly now entrenched in the government in Australia. You have seven of the ten biggest weapons producer. To keep them busy, they had, they had to go out and buy a whole bunch of submarines for $28 billion each. Did anybody really believe that's going to come in at $28 billion? 
Anybody think that's going to be not more like forty billion dollars a pop? <laughs> so they go and pretend they're, they're uh, heroes, a patriot or something. <coughs> Only patriot is the people that stop that. That'll be a patriot act, an act of patriotism, <laughs> I should say. Patriot act got a bad name after September 11th. I've done pretty good. I got 50 views on my videos, I believe. Well, 25 on the second part and 50 views on the first part, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Telling the truth is like the worst crime you can do, apparently. A divergent approaches highlight the transformative impact of automation and AI on modern warfare. And so the little submersibles, ghost sharks, I think they're, they're, they're like $8 million each. They're disposable, right? They're kamikazes. So they'll go ahead of the submarine. If you find any enemies, they'll hit them with a nuke or something, I suppose. What is that? What's Australia going like to spend? That money is enough to do geothermal for the entire country twice. So if they skipped a couple of the submarines, they got enough to, to flip the whole country to geothermal. But they got seven of the ten biggest weapons producer in their country set up shop. And the other three will, are still doing the business, just not set up there yet. They're getting their chunk of the pie, that's for sure. They're getting their pound of flesh, too. So they want thousands of these artificial intelligent, <laughs> which is laughable. Unmanned submarines called ghost sharks. There's a country where you're not even allowed to have a shotgun to defend yourself or take back your country from a corrupted government. Is why they've done that, obviously. They got unbelievable, unbelievable, it's unbelievable. Spot for geothermal or solar or wind. It's unbelievable for storage, on underground storage. It's unbelievable the resources they got at their fingertips. And no, they don't want nothing. Everything is evil except for nuclear. That's all they're happy, they'll be happy with is if they get nuclear power plants. Everything else is evil. We see that worldwide, that narrative, right? Because they need the plants to get the tritium for the fabled fusion. They won't need the resources if they were to ever work it out because they'll kill everything first. Taiwan told uh, Japan to stop water releasing if necessary. Taiwan did. You know, the same ones that put their nuclear dump on Orchard Island where the natives were and told them it was a canning factory for tuna for three decades. Then they found it like, oh, too late, you signed. You signed the lease for a billion years. Too too bad, too sad. Should have been on your ball. What? The nuclear industry wouldn't cut your throat at all. Taiwan, by the way, <coughs> after Fukushima had 2,000 nuclear students, nuclear professors, nuclear academics, nuclear scientists, spam the internet day in, day out for several years. I recently dug up that story. I used to cover it all the time, right? Like a lot of stories, something more eviler comes along that you have to cover, and you can't cover everything. Goodness knows you can't cover it all. You can't, I can't come close to it, eh? I can't cover everything in 24 hours. That's what I'm trying to do at night, by the way. A basic 24-hour news cycle, these shows in particular, right? My last show was just uh, a time machine of Fukushima, so you can go back and say, oh, oh shit, that's right, uh, for two hours or an hour and a half. Oh, like so, like, scaffolding is only used for construction. It's not used for a final product. And whenever they show you anything there, it's surrounded by scaffolding. Which means they just popped it together. It's not even. It's not even finished. It's, you, you can't get on. You can't work on that until you remove all the scaffolding, right? But he walking along like he got a stick up his tritium, tritium. 
tritium. So I always got to bring up these types. Now there's two other reactors and four more fuel pools missing too. Don't don't forget, it's not just these two, and uh, four fuel pools that were in these that are overfilled because they have no repository in Japan to put the fuel, let alone anywhere else on the planet. And it's common practice in these boiling water reactors, which is the world's worst design, I might add, to put your fuel pools above the nuclear meltdowns. How could that fucking go wrong? Scientists develop fuel for sustaining life on a moon base. In certain parts of the moon, it gets minus 248. Other parts of it is in daylight the whole fucking time. You don't need to do that. You don't want to go there because you'll be looking at them with your telescopes. There's lots of these things out there now. They, they, right, they're up to no. It's they're always up to no good, and they being whatever the frig they're up to, it's usually a despicable professor or an ac a disgusting academic, or a revolting scientist. When it comes to nuclear, that's the proper pronunciation. They're they're sadistic pieces of shit. Is there any way you can really describe them? Bangor University recently came up with a response to a problem. Designed a nuclear fuel cell the size of poppy seeds. Produce energy needed to sustain life on Mars. Well, if you're gonna like, if you're gonna be on the moon, rather, if you're gonna be on the moon, why wouldn't you go to a natural? Because you, know, you know, it's. Why wouldn't you like, try to have some kind of tunnel, so you can go in there and put your containment in there where you got all kinds of protection for meteorites and everything else, which, um, or, so, or, you know, radiation and everything else, see? So, like, anything the size of poppy seeds? I'd be concerned, I'm concerned about everything to do with nuclear and the nuclear industry. There's nothing they're up to that's not evil, that's for sure. Some people, some people, you can call them people, I suppose. I, I wouldn't go that far with it. View the moon as a potential stepping stone to Mars. When, when did that start? I haven't, that's the first time I heard that in 50 years. And it holds a considerable reserve of valuable resources. Well, you never know it. Why you, you're spending all this money on everywhere else but Mar uh, the moon for modern technology. Oh, that would be the helium-3, would it? This renowned Bangor team in the United States, is it? Or UK? Oh, this, I can't remember. I'll probably tell us in a minute. Specializing in fuels collaborates with partners such as NASA, the UK Space Agency, the Los Alamos National Laboratory in the US, and Rolls Royce. Th these are all legacy degenerates. Their whole history is an assault on humanity. Professor Middleborough. The trisol fuel cells could power a micro nuclear generator designed by Rolls Royce. Yeah, Rolls Royce small modular reactors are about almost one half the size of the big ones. It's got nothing to do with small modular reactors whatsoever, based on the same design. Just so they can get free money, right? From the energy agencies under the guise of small modular reactors. It's blatant, it's blatant obvious on top of it. Which is approximately the size of a small car and can be attached to a rocket. And what about it goes wrong on the way up and everybody's sucking that in and dying down the road from that exposure. Why would you use this stuff when you can go to the sunny side of the moon and you got all the solar energy you'll ever need? <laughs> and then some. <coughs> if it works on Mars, which is one one fifty to what you got here, why well, wouldn't this work great? Bangor universe, and they were going to use the moon to beam electricity that way back to Earth, right? Uh, Bangor University is also actively engaged in development of a nuclear propulsion system for rockets. Oh, 
Well, just answered itself, didn't it? This is about getting money or an investors obviously then boat, right? Deployment of nuclear propulsion systems that better and smarter people have already tried and hasn't succeeded. And a nuclear propulsion system means you're eventually going to blow them up in the atmosphere trying to get them out of the orbit. That's guaranteed to happen. Dolite conducts a survey for South Bruce here in Canada, in central Canada and Ontario, as a host community for deep geological repository with predetermined outcome, I noticed, for the referendum coming up. The South Bruce community is aware of nuclear waste management organization projects and plans to take part in the 2024 referendum about the willingness to host a deep geological repository for used nuclear fuel. 97% of the survey respondents said they were at least somewhat familiar with the project and 88% said they were definitely voting the referendum. Three quarters agreed the municipality had done a good job informing the public. And 62% said they believe the municipality is taking the right action to meet the future needs of the community. In other words, they were voting yes. <coughs> and that's not what I've seen over the years, the last four years. And placed a high priority on the progress in the growing economy and the proposed nuclear waste management organizations projects, which is the industry itself. You're talking about the industry, the wolf in charge of the kittens, of the, the little hatchlings of the chicken. Here, Mr. Wolf, these are predators. The, there's no way to get it there without venting it into the environment the whole time. When you get it there, you got to repackage. It's a very long process. Huge, everything is ventilated. It can't be shipped there unless it's ventilated. It's ventilated on the highways. All the communities is going through. And <coughs> they won't even have it up and running for another 40 years. So why make a decision now when you don't need it for another 40 years? Why are you putting it, like, why are you putting it so close to one of the, the third biggest aquifer on the entire planet? You know, everything runs eventually to them, the Great Lakes eventually. Why well, put it in, you know, there's something like, what is it, 7,000 ponds in that area on top of that beautiful, untouched, a lot of these ponds might have never been visited by people. Beautiful, spectacular, wonderful area. Why wouldn't you put it somewhere towards the Northern Territories, far, far away from controversies and fresh water and resources and everything else? And everything is vented into the community. So by proxy, uh, and now they, they already located, I believe, 1,600 acres of prime farmland that they bought up in anticipation of a positive vote at tr three times the market value, no less. They want the land to continue to be farmed the entire time, which is around 60 to 100 years of operation, which means they're going to be shipping radioactive food from a nuclear wasteland. It's going to be a nuclear wasteland within the first year of operation of shipping. There will be no safe water or land or air for tens of thousands of years because of the emissions from the repackaging and the venting. And if you just look at WIP of how that played out, that friggin' disaster, and, the, and when they had a meltdown in one of their cells, they claimed it was a truck fire, a salt truck fire. And then he spent around $6 billion on the community and the site before they had new cells opened up alongside of it. What they done was so evil, it's hard to comprehend. Uh, they actually chopped up my original video and put it on KRQE, Albuquerque TV, and and uh, mocked me, and I was completely honest, like I always am. Sellafield, which is a site of a meltdown ongoing now since 1959. It's like a Chernobyl, except it's mixed oxide fuel, much worse than Chernobyl.
And I've done entire presentations for many, many, many years in this cellar field, formerly known as Winchscale. I have no illusions about the reality of what is going on there, and you wouldn't either if you watched any of those presentations of those academic studies and documentations. I don't make assertions. I don't make. I don't have opinions or conjectures based it on facts only. There's 8 million liters a day currently still going in the ocean that we know about that they admit to. 8 million liters a day. And they never mentioned the word tritium since 1959. The coastline is completely polluted. Uh, with plutonium and americium studies uh, are acknowledging that. Then. So they're giving 61000 to an emergency response charity because people are very sick from the nuclear poison. So they got pains of conscience. The money was used to buy the two vehicles to treat some of the victims. So if you, by the way, invest $10 million each year in community projects and organizations, $10 million a year. Your feel good money for genocide and cancer clusters. They had that cancer clusters for quite a while there of children, leukemia clusters. And they blamed it on the common flu, cancer clusters. No, it can't be Columbia. We got a study that says it's the common flu. So don't go pointing your finger at us or we'll sue you because we got a study. Fifteen profitable jobs that don't require a college degree. Nuclear technician. <laughs> I don't need a college degree. <laughs> Great story for the last story of night, right? Don't require a college degree, but the annual salary is $84,000. And anybody that don't have a college degree and get a job that pays that, will cut my fucking throat to keep it. That's a fact. We got hurricanes in every corner of the tropics. <laughs> Thanks, Fukushima. Thanks, nuclear industry. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Hurricanes everywhere. And they're big, baby. They're five, six, seven hundred kilometers across. These are big storms. And that one's whistling Dixie at Category 5s. They got a lot coming your way. You got a rough... I'm stuffed up tonight. Twenty twenty three category five storms. One, two, three, four, five. You got two more to figure. <coughs> That's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. That's what that is. Well, I guess that's it for me. Let's see what time it is. Time I guess this render, converted, is what I'm talking about. And then gets it uploaded, and we got to wait for it to convert to high quality before it'll let you play on your end. And so, so right now, I don't know how long. That could take 50 minutes to 70 minutes, say. And if I go right now, because it's 8 p.m. my time, in the next two hours, I might have it uploaded and close to render. So it might show up quarter after my normal time. But if I don't start right now, we'll never know, will we? I'll be there with you when you're watching it. Uh, Stephen Young. Hi, Stephen. Thank you. Stephen donated another 50 you're a great soul, Stephen. You've been around forever, my friend. And I'm used to shouting out people sometimes during the live show. And I really missed that. I didn't realize how much I enjoyed that. See everybody tomorrow night. I ain't going nowhere. I'm here to go to war. And there's wars. Anything is going to make me happy. 
Because when everybody else gets your shit together and gets on board, we kick some nuke tart asses. Have a great night. We'll see everybody tomorrow night. Take care, everybody.